I think it's fairly unlikely, but you cannot fully dismiss it uh, for the simple reason that if you simply run down the clock till the 29th of March, then the legislative process will take the UK out of the European Union come what may. But I, I think if you look at the parliamentary numbers, there are 650 lawmakers in the UK, and by our calculations, only about 70 or 80 of them actively support a no-deal outcome. So you have to conclude, uh, I say you have to conclude, you should be fairly confident that at some point over the course of the next two and a half months, they will find it a legislative process to, to explicitly block a no-deal. And in that scenario, some of the very heavily sold-off UK assets would, would attract a bid. Mm. Simon, given that so many in the market are expecting this vote in Parliament not to go through, I mean, you just talk about the tricky numbers alone. It does make me wonder, I mean, does the only option, the real viable option on the table seem to be to extend Article 50, which is a curious one because the government has said they can't perhaps do that. Well, they can't unilaterally extend Article 50. They would have to do with the agreement of the 27 other EU countries. You'd need to have unanimity. And I think the EU would rightly say, well, what are we extending for? If we're extending because there's going to be another democratic test, either a second referendum or a general election, then I think that's possible. But of course, the Europeans have got their own elections, the European parliamentary elections um, in Q2, the election of the new commission. They don't want this dragging on into the summer. I think more likely than an extension of Article 50 would at least be the explicit threat of revoking Article 50. And therein lies, I think, the potential for Article 50 movement that the UK can do unilaterally. Simon, we know that the Labour Opposition Party is making this push for a general election if, in fact, the vote fails. Does that bring us any more certainty, though? I mean, do you have a fair grasp of what, perhaps, if, in fact, the election goes the way that Labour would like it to go, what their Brexit plan would actually look like? <laughs> you ask a fantastic question because I think not, not, not many people are clear, including some Labour MPs, what the, the Labour Party strategy is. They're talking about renegotiating the deal, but the European Union have said that the deal is already shut. It's, it's, mm. it's concluded. So it's quite difficult to see that as a credible policy position. In terms of a general election, though, I think it's worth reminding your viewers there are only two mechanisms in the UK by which a, a general election can be called, and one of those is not the Prime Minister calling it herself. It either requires two-thirds of lawmakers to actively vote for it, or it takes the sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II, to dissolve mm. Parliament. Both of those two scenarios are difficult to see. It would have to get, a, you know, quite a lot more fractious, I think, until the parliamentarians actively invite a general election, mm. or indeed that the Queen steps in. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.